We're here today at Royal North Shore Hospital and I'm talking with Dr Susie Mahalladu who is the Senior Hospital Scientist and Director of Ambulatory Blood Pressure Monitoring and Head of Cardiovascular and Hormonal Research. Welcome, thank you for your time. Thank you. We're talking to you because you've uh, co-authored a uh, short report that's appearing in our 17th of August issue called Impact of Grief Delivered Via Media Technology. Tell us a little bit about why you decided to, to do this piece and, and, and what it's all about. Okay. I decided to do this piece because, I, as we do any clinical study, we report it for the clinical management of uh, the persons who present or our clients. Mm -hmm. And um, I reported it and, and I didn't think much about it. And then what happened was, it, it was at the time in December when Philip Hughes, the, the, the uh, funeral for Philip Hughes, yep. which touched most of us, I think, because, yes, uh, yeah. because it was an unusual accident. And then um, I didn't think much about it and I continued. And then we had the French massacre. And in fact, what triggered it was, and it always happens this way, I think, I was sitting in the hairdressers yep. ha having a haircut. And I remember one of the other clients was sitting there reading the paper and she closed it. And she said, that's it. I'm not reading another paper. I can't do it anymore. You know, yeah. every single page was filled with some sort of... And I think we had the, the flight... Um, uh, 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 MH17. MH17. Yeah. So there was a series. And then I seem to recall that I, at the time I was reporting these studies because what we do with the ambulatory is we just don't record blood pressure, which is why the patient... We correlate it to their activity because yes. the idea of ambulatory blood pressure is to record the person's blood pressure away from the hospital environment yep. because we know it's called the white coat effect, even yes. though we don't wear white coats. Yes. Uh, people don't like having their blood pressure. And yes, we can do it with them measuring their own blood pressure, but then you still get the alerting response. Yep. So having an ambulatory monitor where we don't show them the display, they certainly get the report after it's been reported. But what we try and do is we give them a diary to record their activity mm -hmm. at the time of the uh, measurement. That's also motion. I guess quite often I get husbands saying, I argued with my wife, can you show me <laughs> the, the event? Or as is in our re report, a dishwasher fell over, not on the person, yeah. but, but, but caused an emotional response. So these events are all happening, but because blood pressure is considered something that people don't consider, mm. It, it's a silent killer. This yeah. is what it's been branded by the WHO organisation. Finally, I'm so pleased because I've been working with uh, um, uh, research and management of hypertension for 30 years. Yeah. And it's continually, we focus on all of the major chronic diseases and we don't really consider hypertension. Yeah. But in fact, it's a silent disease because you have fluctuations, as you can see from the report, but we don't pick it up unless you get major. And so what happened was I went back to the, the, the um, uh, reports and I looked at them. Yep. And interestingly enough, two, five people, mm -hmm. this is a chance finding because we wouldn't have picked it up even. Two of the five people that had monitors that day watched the funeral. Yes. And surprisingly, because they were very good in, in uh, recording their activities, yeah. they recorded that they were watching the funeral. And we instruct the people that they don't move during that me one minute of the measurement. Yeah. So these were th those changes, which is about 25 millimetres of uh, mercury systolic blood pressure increase, yeah. um, was when they um, were sitting down. So they shouldn't have had an increase. Right. Certainly if the, you're moving around, like you were today, yes. Um, then yes, you would expect a, an increase, yeah. but not when you're sitting down for a while. And their their increases and the, cre the increases correlate with the same as activity. And we know from previous studies from the, the, our, um, our colleagues and also my co-authors that increases in blood pressure, the increase in blood pressure is, uh, correlates to mild hypertensives or people with high blood pressure yep. um, doing mental stress. Right. We also conduct here, um, uh, we're conducting studies, ongoing studies uh, about bereavement, mm -hmm. but of relatives. The important point here is these are people who didn't know Philip, yep. just like you and I, yep. and did, weren't related to him. Yes. So that's the impact we probably all have, but we're not knowing about it. Yeah. And these, it's these fluctuations in blood pressure, which I'm particularly interested in. So um, how, how large was the fluctuation with these? 25 people? millimetres in systolic right, right. for both of them. Yeah. It's very individualised. 
the response I may have and mm. the impact it had on me, you know, going back and reflecting on it, yes. uh, is the same as those two people. But it may not happen to you or someone else. And that's the interesting thing, that, that yes, it can have it, and it's a bit like cereals. I say to people, we don't all like the same cereal. Yeah. Yeah. What I don't like, and unfortunately does happen, is we have interviews and yes. instead of reporting the facts, we have people's views about it yes. because that's what the media uh, 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 likes to do because they are impacted. But unfortunately, we're getting more and more of them. And Well, it's the 24-7 news cycle, isn't it? And we're getting it with our emails. We don't realise the information impact we have at the moment. Oh. And we're not really removing ourselves from them. You know, there are correlations, there are ongoing observational studies and proper prospective studies showing our mobile phones near our, our bed, yeah. <laughs> where we check them first, or we walk along, and instead of people walking and greeting you, they're on their phone <laughs> checking, yeah. and not, not watching with it. So it, it can't be good for us. It cannot be good for us. Long term, no. Yeah. And there's there's quite a bit, you know, the the one way rather than the interaction that we've lost. You know, the the conversation. Yeah. You know, if I say something to you and you you have a, an adverse, you know, you you, you uh, your your face saddens. I I'll stop saying it, but yeah. unfortunately, if you do it online or via t televised, you're not getting the response back from those people unless they feed it through. And yes, we don't want to change media, certainly not because, mm. but we want to make them aware that, or at least I do, I everybody say. will experience a, a death in their family. Mm. Whether it's a friend yeah. or a family, we'll all go through it. I, uh, we will eventually and we all assume that it's the emotional strain but we've found we've actually uh, completed research as you said clinical research we has which has shown not only emotional impact these are on relatives from yeah. people who believe but also physiological measurements you know their their blood pressure was increased their their blood uh, you know was um, abnormal th uh, prothrombotic yeah it all resolved within six months and we found ecg abnormalities all of those factors resolved by six months after the death of their loved one right but blood pressure systolic blood pressure still remained elevated wow. yes. is there i mean what's the mechanism behind that physiologically uh, well sympathetic drive but then there probably other because cortisol was up as well okay. which is an indicator of sickness, but they were probably hormonal because they weren't sleeping well during that time they weren't eating well it's such a we know now that um, inflammatory or uh, markers uh, are elevated you know hormones are elevated uh, certain inflammatory um, proteins are increased uh, by just sitting Yes. Believe it or not, yeah, believe and it. that's why we get the problems that we do. So it's it's a multifaceted problem. It's not just one thing. Certainly, heightened sympathetic drive. What we would like to say, and this is why we can't dictate what treatment, is seek help. Yep. Talk to your doctor. And the message is, if you do go through grief, go and see your doctor. Yeah. If you don't have a doctor, maybe it's time that you did go and find a, a, a general practitioner. Mm. They're your first line of call. I'm not saying go to the hospital. I'm not saying to come to us. Yeah. This is not. It's general practitioner because just the interaction of talking to someone, but also the measurements, they will be able yeah. to do something. And if you've had high blood pressure and didn't know about it, you will soon know about it. So that's the motto. Right. We really don't take appreciate our general practitioners as much, but they are the specialists. We rely on them, and this is what we're saying. Yes, obviously, you may need treatment, yep. but rather than decide which treatment, because as you saw, these people were on different treatments, Yes. Uh, our, uh, the whole point of this article is to uh, hopefully alert people that it's happening. Not to, to recommend any treatment, not to, to, to advertise ambulatory blood pressure, yep. although <laughs> I am, <laughs> um, because it is a powerful tool, yep. uh, um, because, uh, but it's to, to seek assistance because we all need it, even the, the best of us. Terrific. That sounds like a great place to stop. Thank you for your time.